Covenant Church. We are so glad that you're here. My name is Ryan. I get the wonderful opportunity to be a part of the teaching team here at Covenant Church. Today, I got a message for you that I'm extremely passionate about that I think is going to add value to your life. Like whether you're a Christian or not, I think today's message is needed for the world, and I think God has a lot to say about it. Today's subject is how to have difficult conversations with offensive people, okay? How to have difficult conversations with offensive people. Now, I wish offensive people were unavoidable, but they're not. They are everywhere, okay? And I, and I wish that we could just kind of like, you know, run away from offensive people, but they're, they're unavoidable. And, I, you know, whoever wrote uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Ain't never got cussed out. They probably had really encouraging parents, never worked in a toxic work environment, lived next to neighbors that send them pies and all that stuff. But for the rest of us, nah, people be saying some stuff sometimes that you just be like, you ain't got no manners, no nothing, and they just offensive. And it's 2023. You can't say nothing. Everybody's sensitive. Like, people get offended. Sometimes you don't just get offended. Sometimes you get pre-offended. <laughs> you ain't even had the conversation yet, and you already mad, okay? You are pre-mad. Some of you get an invitation to a baby shower, and you instantly get fired up because you know who's going to be there, and you start having an argument with them in your head before the event even happens. You are pre-offended, okay? Like some of you got a meeting this week with a certain somebody, and you already got like a, an argument and a rebuttal already started, and you are pre-offended. Like it can happen to any one of us, and here's what else I know to be true about you and me. 2024 is coming. And I can predict the future. You ready? Okay. Someone's going to win the presidential election. <laughs> and half of the divided states of America is going to be mad at the other half. Okay. And pardon me if I don't subscribe to a way of living where I got to be mad at a group of people every four years. <laughs> and here's what I want you to know. About your conversations, did you know that God has ordained you to have some conversations with some people? That he can put words on your lips. Oh, God's got a lot to say about this. I think this is really going to help somebody today because every single one of us has at least one offensive person in our life. Do not look at your offensive person right now, okay? This is not the time to look to the neighbor on your left or the neighbor on your right. I don't need no elbows today, okay? I need you to look right up here, okay? Some of us married to some offensive people, raising some offensive people, work with, work for some offensive people. And I just, I'll just tell you, like, what I've learned about human beings is the older they get, the more offensive they become. And the reason for that is the older you get, the more you lose your filter. You done cared about what people think for so long. About your 50s, 60s, you just be like, man, forget it. I'm going to just say what I need to say, Okay. Old people be like, listen, I tell it how it is. You tell it how it might be, okay? Like, they just got something about them. Like, I'm going to just speak my mind, okay? I'm going to just keep it 100. I'm like, you keeping it offensive is what you're doing. <laughs> we all got at least one older person in life. Every time they talk, you be like, hey, 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 chill, 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 chill. And they always say the same thing. What I say? What I say? Like, you don't know what you just said? You didn't hear it come out your mouth? <laughs> On the other end, Children, they're on the other side of the filter. They haven't learned it yet to be able to throw it away. So somebody came in the house the other day. My son looked at him and said, so you still single or what's going on? I said, you can't say that. You can't, you can't, you can't just say that. He's like, but they are still single, so I don't get why. Daddy, you said, you said not to lie and always speak the truth. We need to talk about that statement right there, okay? Last week, my son comes to me and goes, hey, uh, Dad, man, uh, I can't sleep, man. My stomach hurt. Will you pray for me? I say, yeah, yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal my son's stomach and let him sleep good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He goes, that's it? <laughs> that's all you got? You can do better than that? I said, how do you know I can do better than that? He goes, I done heard you give better prayers for people you barely know. That might be true, but it don't make it any less offensive. <laughs> 
And then there are times where people have said things to us that have just floored us. It's like their words left a mark. It's like their words somehow left a soundtrack in our brain that we continue to put on repeat to this day. They said it 10 years ago, but you woke up thinking about it this morning. Because words can pierce a soul and sometimes it just sits there. How dare you bring home grades like that? Why did you wear that dress? You embarrassed me. What do you even do here? These are things that can really just plummet your soul. Sometimes you get a racist comment, a sexist comment. Some of us have endured quite a bit. I just want you to know that there is a version of your life where you can hear some of the most horrible things in the world and still walk in your God-given purpose. And so today I just, I realize that people got to have a lot of difficult conversations. And I'm going to go through a lot of scripture today and I just, I want to help us. I want to help us talk to one another. And like really talk to one another, and I just have to wonder what our conversations would look like if we invited God to be a part of them. So um, I'm going to give us four things, four things that I believe are going to help us have difficult conversations with offensive people. You ready for number one? Number one, realize we are all offensive. <laughs> I want you to look at your neighbor on your right and say, I'm offensive. Go ahead, right now. I'm offensive. Do not say, I know. Okay, don't, 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 don't agree with them. Don't say amen, okay? <laughs> look at your other neighbor and say, I'm offensive, Okay. I'm offensive. I know some of you are like, I'm not offensive. You are offensive. I'm telling you that right now. We are all offensive. Let me tell you who I'm the most offensive to. Barbers, okay? Now, I got a crazy schedule, and I got a bunch of different barbers. Sometimes I need a haircut in a different city. Sometimes it's late at night. Sometimes it's early in the morning. And so I have a little bit of a smorgasbord and variety of different barbers that I need for different situations. However, whenever I get a haircut, from one of them and the other one finds out, like they see me at the gym, they be looking at me like this. What's up, Ryan? <laughs> Who did that? I'm like, you're acting like I cheated on you. I'm not married to you, okay? I pay you money to cut my hair. Calm down. <laughs> However, I'm offensive. I, I love what Romans chapter 3 says. It says, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul is writing to first century Christians in Rome, and a lot of them believed that Jews had a corner on the market when it came to having a special relationship with God. And the Apostle Paul is coming alongside them and saying, hey, you know this group of people, um, Gentiles, non-Jews, people that are on the outside looking in, guess what? You have in common with those people that you often find offensive. <laughs> you are in the same boat as them. You have sinned and needed saving. You needed a Savior, and the playing field has been leveled because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. I love what it says in, in Isaiah 53, verse 6. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Who's all? You, me, and whatever offensive person you've been thinking about since I started this message. <laughs> all of us have lost our way. All of us have sinned. All of us have found ourselves in a boat where we needed healing and needed saving. And I just got to let you know, it is going to be so much easier to have a difficult conversation with an offensive person when you realize that that offensive person is also having a difficult conversation with an offensive person. There's something powerful about getting in the boat with somebody and saying, you know what, I, I realize that there is some things that I could work on as well. It says we all like sheep. I did some studying on sheep this past week because I was just curious. Come to find out this is perhaps one of the most offensive verses in all of the scripture to call us all sheep. 
Now, these are, this is not a, an animal that you want to be. You want to hear that. You are a lion. Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Sheep, man. Like, that's not good. <laughs> and, and whenever you read about sheep and just how they act, it really, you get a picture of a, a baby. We all act like babies and lose our way. Sometimes we kick and scream when things don't go well for us. Every single one of us at some point in our life acts like a teenager that just lost Wi-Fi or their cell phone died and just lose our minds. And But for us, it's even smaller things. They watched an episode without me. I can't believe it. Oh no, what are we going to do? <laughs> uh, when I got married, I, uh, I figured out my wife helped me understand that women have these superpowers where they have intuition to be able to read another woman without saying very little words. And so uh, one time a woman walked past us and said, hello. And in my mind, she said, hi, how are you guys? That's what I heard. That ain't what she heard. She goes, you don't know what she just said to us. I'm like, what did she say? She goes, you don't know women, Ryan. Trust me. She said this, 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 this. I'm like, I, I, I promise you, I didn't hear that. I know you didn't hear it, but I saw it. Okay. Like there was, there was just something on it. I'm just like, Guys just don't do that. We're like, hey, how are you, man? Good. He said he's good. That, then this is what he is. It's over. <laughs> but I love that the scripture says that they laid the iniquity of us all. Like you might think you, 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 you're on board with sin. Iniquity is even deeper. Iniquity is inward. It is the thing in us that bends towards evil. That was laid on Jesus Christ for you and for me. And it's good for us to recognize when engaging with another human being that they got an iniquity issue and so do we, and we needed Jesus to solve it. So before I have a difficult conversation with you, I got to take a hard look in the mirror and realize we all, like sheep, like babies, have lost our way. And so before I come judging you coming in hot, let me take a hard look to go, you know what, maybe there's some things in me that I need to deal with as well. The second thing that I think is vitally important if you are going to have a difficult conversation with an offensive person is beware of our posture. Beware of our posture. There is a book written by a former uh, FBI counterintelligence officer who specialized in nonverbal communication. The book is called What Every Body Is Saying. It's fascinating. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to understand is that when you are engaging in a difficult conversation, you started talking long before your mouth was even open. Because our bodies communicate something. In the book, they talk about even just foot tapping. Just tell something about a person. Oh, something up. I can see it in your foot. Something ain't right with that foot. Like, they can tell, like, even where your shoulders are, eye contact. And for me, I have to realize that my biggest issue in conversations is I don't know how to not be 6'3". It is what it is. Like, I wish I was sometimes shorter so I could look people in the eye. But for the most part, 98% of the conversations I have in my life, I'm looking down on people. Yeah, mm -hmm. So immediately, I'm down five just because I'm up five. Does that make sense? And so I have to beware of my posture. I love how the Apostle Paul talked about this in Colossians 3, verses 12. It says, therefore, is God's chosen people. And I just want to put a pin in that. The next time you have a difficult conversation with an offensive person, remind yourself, I think I can be different because I am God's chosen people. I don't got to talk like everybody else talk. I can think a little bit different. I can invite God to this conversation. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy, dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Clothe yourself. Next time you have a difficult conversation with an offensive person, picture yourself getting dressed before you do. Man, let me, let me put on some compassion. Let me put on some gentleness. Let me put on some, some patience. Let me put on some humility. Do you know what would happen in your difficult conversations with offensive people if you wore compassion before you had them? 
you might come to the conclusion that perhaps something is going on in their life that you cannot see, yet you are judging them for the thing that you can. And so what happens for a compassionate person is it's going, I'm going to leave a little bit of space in this conversation for something dark going on in their world that I've just yet to find out about. So let me just, let me, before I come in guns blazing, because some of us, our conversations are, like this is our posture. Like, like, we're, like we're ready, like, like it's a Western showdown, like you go first, like that's up. But I could just imagine if you, you can tell when you're talking to somebody whose posture is, I'm, I'm open to really having a, a conversation. That Peter used similar language. He said, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. If you're looking to have favor in a conversation... Walk in it with humility. One of the reasons I think a lot of our difficult conversations go south is because you and I are obsessed with winning the conversation instead of building the relationship. And so whatever happens, whenever we feel like we always have to be right, we are obsessed with it. It's like, I got to be right and they got to be wrong. The only problem with that is none of us want to be with, work with, or work for someone who's always right. I've never sat with a single person that said, you know what, Ryan, you know what I'm looking for? <laughs> it would be great if my future spouse was always right. That's what I want. That's what I want. Yeah. You know what a great leader is? Always right. Nobody says that. Then why is it that we're always trying to be the thing that nobody wants to have in their life? At some point, you and I have to step back and embrace what is called intellectual humility. Intellectual humility is the importance of knowing you could be wrong. I'm not saying that you are. What it's doing is saying, you know what, I'm going to leave a little bit of margin in my intellect for somebody else's perspective. Do you want all the four words that I think will add value and improve every relationship and every conversation that you have? It's these words. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I can't tell you how many people I know that are no longer on speaking terms with their parents, that have lost relationships in the last five years, all because one party or another couldn't use these words. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And just imagine how this will just change your conversations forever. Hey, uh, I could be wrong, but here's what I think our country needs. Hey, I, I, I could be wrong, but man, this is what I think needs to happen in our organization. I could be wrong, but I, I, I think that, man, that this is what could improve our marriage. Just imagine, it, like, like imagine the next marriage conversation. Hey, hey, sweetie, I could be wrong, but I distinctly remember you saying you were going to clean the kitchen. However, I could be wrong. I don't think I am, but I could be. Versus you said that you was going to clean the kitchen. And they go, I didn't say that. I don't even remember that. And that was three days ago. And then, a, boom, bomb went off. Do you see how I could be wrong? Just changed the entire tone of the conversation. Like next time you go home, and let's say they didn't add enough seasoning to, to the meat. You know what I'm saying? I got you. Hey, babe, I could be wrong. But I think this chicken needs a little bit more salt. It could be me. Maybe I got COVID. Maybe I lost taste. I don't know. I could. I, it, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. May, maybe it's my taste bud. Maybe I got a cold. Something's coming. I don't know. But maybe I need to go to the doctor. However, when I tasted it, I, I couldn't taste the salt. Maybe you missed it on that one. Maybe like, I could be wrong. Here's why I could be wrong. It's so important. If you can never say I could be wrong, you will never say I was wrong. There's levels to this thing. You'll never say I was wrong. And I love I was wrong. I was wrong is my favorite. Because I'm, I'm happy to admit I was wrong 10 years ago. I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wrong a long time ago. But this next one, I am wrong? Never. Nope. Not today. Nope. I, I might be wrong tomorrow, but not today. Like, I'm right today. And maybe for you, it's my bad, my fault. This one's on me. I'll own that. Yeah, I did tell you I was going to do the dishes. And then the NBA playoffs came on, and I just decided, oh, my bad. All on that. 
we already are going to have difficult conversations. What I'm trying to help you do today is make them a little less difficult. I love what Romans 12 verse 18 says. It says, if it is possible, if it is possible, which I just love the Apostle Paul's realism here. He goes, because sometimes it ain't possible. (laughs) But if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. As far as it depends on you. I know what some of you are thinking, man, if I could just send this message to my boss, this would be great. We're going to have a great conversation. No, it's for us. It's not for our sister. It's not for our brother. It's not for our mother. No, no, it's for me. And I want to do my part in the conversation even when somebody else doesn't. Because it, it, it's hard to go, Hey, I could be wrong. And they go, yeah, you are wrong. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought we both were going to do it at the same time. I thought that was going to go a little bit different. (laughs) You can't control what other people say to you. But you can control what you do with what they say. And you can control the words that are going to come out of your mouth. And we can't keep letting other people bait us into becoming people we were never called to be in the first place. Because whenever somebody offends you, you go on the what? defense. And nobody likes being with an offensive person, and nobody likes being with a defensive person. So what if we started playing a different game? And say, you know what? I actually want to be in control of my conversations. And I, y'all, I have fallen for the trap a lot in my life. My mouth has gotten me in trouble way too many times. You know what somebody said to me earlier this week? They said, well, Ryan, you're a young leader. I went, oh, I'm a young leader. And I turned into Petty Betty on sight, okay? I said, well, you're an old leader, and that's why nobody wants to follow you. Ryan, stop, okay? You need to chill. That was wrong. You have sinned. You got iniquity issues. Like, it's this bad. And I thought, Ryan, why? Look at what you just became in five seconds. All because you got on the defensive. And perhaps they didn't even mean it in the way that I heard it. But sometimes we got that negative interpreter that's turning friends into enemies for no reason at all. It's really bad when you turn your spouse into an enemy and they were just trying to talk to you. The third thing that's vitally important, to have a difficult conversation with an offensive person, define the goal of the conversation. I I I just got to tell you, uh, I have goals for conversations. Like, I I know how I want the conversation to end. Uh, You do too. You just may not be able to uh, verbalize it and put words to it. Um, But our options for goals of conversations is, number one, uh, we change their mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to get them to think like us and do what we want them to do. Like, that's the goal of the conversation. You may not say that out loud, but that's, that's why you are putting up all of this evidence and creating this court case to make them do what you want them to do. But it's a terrible strategy for a difficult conversation. Because nobody likes having their arm twisted. So the twisting arm strategy, it just isn't good. Um, the other thing that you could do in a conversation that this could be a goal for you is, uh, well, they change your mind. <laughs> good luck. That's not happening. Um, the other option that a lot of people fall for, cancel them. Yeah, let's just not talk to mom anymore. Terrible plan for your life. I got a fourth option. And this is going to take your spiritual life to the next level if you want it to. Inspire them. Inspire them. Breathe life into them. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Let me tell you about the day my life changed when I woke up and realized that every single word that comes out of my mouth has power of life to breathe life into somebody or destroy them completely. And I made a decision that I will use my voice to lift up a shout of praise to the living God for all the days of my life, and I will use my voice to encourage people's souls. Because I got life living on the inside of me, so I might want to breathe that into somebody else. So I'm going to use my voice in every conversation. I think, I know we're talking about something, but I, I got a little trick up my sleeve. I'm trying to breathe life into you, and I'm unashamed about it. I got goals for my conversations. I love what 1 Corinthians 14 says. And this, this is, this, is it, this, this scripture is very interesting to me. Because it's not like theologically foundational. 
It's almost like one of those moments in the Apostle Paul's writings where he's like, here's a suggestion. And, and this is what he says. He says, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Now, uh, prophecy uh, has gotten a weird connotation in some Christian circles, like it's this thing reserved for super spiritual people. But I love the way the Paul put it. He goes, I think you all should desire this. I think every single person under the sound of my voice should desire to walk prophetically, that your conversations should be prophetic. Now, let me give you a very simple definition of prophecy, God-inspired words, God-inspired words. And so imagine if you and I, before we had difficult conversations, we said, Lord, would you inspire me today to inspire somebody else, to breathe life into somebody else. God, if there is something dead living on the inside of somebody, may I wake up a dream. May my words be faith-filled. I am excited this week because I just got a feeling I'm going to be in a conversation with somebody, and in the moment, God's going to speak to me to speak to them. Just imagine this for a second. Just imagine if we could just level up the conversations to go, you know, this was a difficult conversation and now we're going to change it to a spiritual conversation because I am one of God's chosen people. I'm not here to do normal. No, no, no. We're, I'm here to call life out of somebody. I'm here to bring marriages back together. I'm all about restoration. I'm all about helping people reach their dreams. No, I want my conversations to have some goals and at the end of it, I want you to leave not just inspired by me. I want you to leave inspired by Imagine if you and I decided that that's what we wanted our conversations to be like. I love what Colossians 4 verse 6 says. It says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Let me ask you this. Just take a little self-inventory. What are your conversations full of? Just think about that for a minute. What are your conversations full of? A lot of our conversations can be full of anger, pessimism, gossip. Just look at some of your conversations. How much of those conversations are, girl, you won't believe, how much? Manipulation, narcissism, angling. Always got an agenda, something up the sleeve. I, and then we're shocked when difficult conversations don't go well. Think about what our conversations are full of. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. I know what I want my conversations to be full of. I want to use my words to inspire and encourage other people to connect with their Savior. Like, I'm all about having some difficult conversations, but sometimes we have to shift the conversation if that's what God wants. You know what I believe is happening in this room? I believe God has placed his hand on so many people to start something, but they're just too scared to do it. There's authors in this room. There's business owners in this room. There's filmmakers in this room. There's future pastors in this room. And you know what I want to do in conversation? Pull it out of you. Imagine if we did this in small groups. Here's the deal. It's NBA playoff time. I could have literally 100 conversations this week about NBA playoffs. Easy. And there's nothing wrong in that. There's no sin in that. There's no iniquity in that. <laughs> but in light of the goals I have for my conversations, it would be a shame if I know who you want to win an NBA championship, but I don't even know how your marriage is. It would be a shame if I know how you feel about politics, but I don't even know how your soul is in the first place. If, somebody, if you lost your faith, would anybody know, given the conversations that you are having? No, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to be intentional about the conversations that we are having on a daily basis, and you'd be surprised how those conversations will shift when you and I have a goal to say, you know what, I don't want this to just be a conversation between you and me. I want this to actually be a God conversation. I love what the Apostle Paul says in, in Ephesians, 
It says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. We love speaking the truth. We just sometimes forget to do it in love. You know what I believe? I think some of us are trying to have some difficult conversations because some truth needs to be said. But unfortunately, we lack the relational equity to be able to have those conversations. That's why I love in Proverbs 27, 6, it says wounds from a friend can be trusted. Some of us are inflicting some wounds, but we don't have the relational equity for them to actually even hear what we have to say in the first place. And so sometimes what we have to do is the work of actually building relationships before coming in guns hot with my truth versus your truth, and we miss the love piece. And so I, 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 I want to encourage you today to keep the relationship in mind, and my heart just breaks for so many parents that just, there's just, the lines just aren't clear between parents and their children. And it's hard for them to see it in the mirror, but they've actually lost relational equity with their children, and yet they're trying to speak truth in love, and they're going, I loved you, I wiped your butt for eight years, and then I put you to school, and then I, and like, I ain't got to prove my love to you. It's like, yeah, but over the course of time, your relational equity eroded through all of these difficult conversations and you stood 10 toes down on what you thought was right. And in the process, you lost your son and you lost your daughter. I want them to come back to the table to be able to have a conversation with someone. And in the midst of all of that, and he said and she said in my truth, perhaps we forgot to invite the living God to the table in the first place. The last point is very simple, but it is certainly last but not least. Number four, talk to God before talking to them. Your mouth will get you in trouble if you don't go talk to God first. I can't tell you how many times I walked into a meeting and I went, I got this. And then at the end of it, God was like, ha, ha, that was funny. <laughs> you probably should have talked to me before you ran in there with your little wisdom, huh? No, that's cute. <laughs> Talk to God before talking to them. I know some of you need to have a tough conversation with the boss. You're frightened. Your livelihood is on the line. There was a study done by, uh, uh, with 10,000 employees. They said, can you describe your work environment in one word? 73% of them said toxic. So that's three-fourths of the room that might enter into a toxic environment tomorrow. And they're just going, I can't say, and I just don't, and do I bring, uh, I, I got an option for you. Talk to God. Before you even open your mouth. I, I, I saw this in, in Exodus 14. Um, a lot of people are familiar with the Moses story. If you're not, uh, God goes to a guy in his 80s and says, hey, I want you to go overthrow a government and tell them to let two million people go. Pretty simple. Um, <laughs> that happens and uh, you've got Moses leading a few million people in a desert no meal plan. Oh, it's going to be door dashed from heaven. Good luck with that. Uh, it's kind of a crazy story when you read the whole thing. Um, Exodus 14, verse 10. They've not yet crossed the infamous Red Sea. Verse 10 says, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, this is, this is where they get offensive. Watch this. Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? Thank you. Appreciate that. What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. They had a place in their life. They said, we want to be slaves. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Leadership is hard especially when you're leading a lot of offensive people. Now, they lucky I wasn't Moses because I'd have cussed them out. You ungrateful, like I'd have lost it, okay? 
I would have just lost it. I'm like, do you know what I just did? You know how old these knees are? I done walked across the desert for you with a staff, and you're going to come at me talking about some graves in the gardens in the desert? You done lost your mind. I hope, to, you know what, Pharaoh, come get them. Okay, that's what I would have did. <laughs> talking crazy to me. <laughs> hey, but Moses, he was unoffendable, yo. I, I, he, he didn't retaliate. This is what he said. It says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. He's looking at what's actually going on with him. Do not be afraid. Stand firm. And you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. What maturity by Moses. To say, uh, let me know if you understand something, y'all. I know you're mad. But I've already heard from God. So I don't have to make this a thing about you versus me. But let me show you what God is doing for us. He took the high road. He took the high road and said, listen, I've already already heard from God. I already got a piece. So I'm not going to let you come up in here and get me all riled up for nothing when I've already heard from God about what we're going to do next. And I just, (laughs) oh, you just got to love. You just got to love God because verse 15, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell the Israelites. Let's move on. One of the reasons I implore people to follow Jesus is because I believe it helps them do the thing that they thought was impossible move on. I wish we all worked in prophetic environments. And we can if you work there. I want you to have a different mindset. I want you to walk in the authority God has given you. I want God to give you God-inspired words. And who knows, if people you work with don't start using the phrase, how'd you know? How'd you know? And you go, I don't know. I just, God put you on my heart, and I just felt like sharing it today. Doesn't got to be weird. But it can be God-inspired. The last verse I want to share with you is in Isaiah 43, verse 2. This is what I believe reveals the nature of God and how he works with his people. He said it through the prophet Isaiah 43, verse 2. It says, when you pass through waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. I realize that a lot of people under the sound of my voice are going through a lot right now. I just want you to hear from your Heavenly Father today that He's covering you. That He loves you. I I know your, your work environment may not be ideal. I know that your home environment may not be ideal. But may you truly sense the covering of the Lord. I know there might be some offensive people all around us, but just remember, you are somebody's offensive person that is around them. And so my prayer for you is that if you find yourself in a volatile situation, if you find yourself in a tough family circumstances and it feels like it's always a difficult conversation, may you know that there is a God of the universe who wants to cover you and hold your hand and walk you through that and you're going to be all right. My prayer for us is that every conversation that we have this week And every conversation that we have in 2024, that before we open our mouth, that we would invite our Heavenly Father to inspire us before we open our mouth. God, I thank you so much for this amazing church. I pray, God, that you would come to the table. I pray, God, that you would inspire us, that you would speak to us. 
Oh, there's so many difficult conversations that we face in our future. And Lord, before we try and go and make something happen on our own, would you meet us? Would you talk to us? Would you give us that peace? Would you cover us? May we not try to have difficult conversations without you. God, I pray that in moments where we are offended, God, may we remember the purpose you've called us to. May we not get on the defensive. May we not feel like we got to make some things happen on our own. God, may we trust you in those conversations to continue to be the person that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Today I want to give uh, each and every person uh, an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of their life. Uh, I realize that for some people it's hard to have a lot of difficult conversations when things aren't right with you. And so today we want to give you an opportunity to make things right with God with every head bowed and every eye closed. If that's you today and you say, Ryan, I, I want to surrender my life to Christ. I want my life to look different. Or maybe you say, man, Ryan, I want to rededicate my life to Christ. I've lost my way. I've walked away from the faith. If that's you today, you say, Ryan, I want to surrender my life to Christ with every head bowed and every eye closed. Would you just slip up your hand and say, hey, Ryan, that's me. Ryan, that's me. Is there anybody here today? I see your hand back there. That's awesome. That's one. I see two, three, four, five. Anybody else? Six, seven, eight. Anybody else? Nine, ten. That's great. Anybody else? Anybody else? We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. 11, 12, I see you all the way in the back. 13, that's awesome. Anybody else? 14, that's awesome. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I think I see 15 back there. That's awesome. 16, 17, that's awesome. Hey, can we all say this prayer together? Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I ask now that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender my past, my present, and my future to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen, amen. Come on, can we make some noise for every single person that gave their heart to Christ? This is literally the best day of your life, and if you pray that prayer today, you can scan this QR code on the screen. And uh, we'd love to send you a seven-day, what's called a, a devotional. It's just a booklet that can kind of walk you through the journey of what's next and having a relationship with Jesus. Or you could text the word SAVED to the number 972-848-9797. Again, you could text the word SAVED to the number 972-848-9797, and we will send you a digital download of that same devotional. We also have uh, our prayer team down here at the front. We'd love to pray with you, and we can give you a, a physical copy of that devotional as well. Once again, can we make some noise for every single person that gave their heart to Christ? Uh, a lot of today's message stems from a book I wrote uh, almost seven years ago called Unoffendable. And what's interesting is, is when I wrote this book, I thought, well, this is the season, like, you know, we need to be talking about this, but things will get better. Uh, things got worse, and so uh, the book sold more, so we're like, oh, okay, we should probably print more of those. So, uh, so this is out in the lobby. I'll be out there uh, signing those. This one you do have to pay for. However, um, I had business leaders that said, hey, man, I would love to take people through some unoffendable content, but this has Bible verses in it, so can you do me a favor? Can you make a business edition? So... We made a business edition of Unoffendable so that people could take it to work. So uh, we're actually giving this away for free. So if you work in corporate America or you got a team and you want to pass these out to every offensive person, you know, hey, you should read this. Um, you can totally, it's out there. It's free. That, that's for you. Um, also, um, I wrote a book called Chasing Failure. Uh, I failed writing the book five times before it became a USA Today bestselling book. And so uh, this is one of the editions that um, I actually never put on Amazon. The only place you can get this version of Chasing Failure is at this church. And I'm giving it away to you today 
for free, okay? Now, do not fight one another, one per household on this one. We had a little issue last service. I had to call security on a couple people because people get crazy. Nevertheless, this one's, uh, this one's free for you. So if you're confused about what you got to pay for and what's free, you got to go to the book table to find out, okay? So anyways, wanted to give you some resources to continue some of these conversations. I also have a uh, YouVersion Bible app devotional on the Bible app on Unoffendable. So if you and your small group want to go through some of that content together and talk about how you've been offending each other for a very long time, I think you should, I think you should do that as well. Can I bless you before you go? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may he cover you with his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Have a great week.